Okay, this is Nakamura Carlson, and we're gonna go to we're gonna well we could we could look at a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Here's what I wanted to look at. Actually, was this position? Okay. I'm I'm trying to go back, but I'm going forward. Okay. All right. Okay, in this position, Nakamura made a mistake. And after the mistake, the game's a draw. But he should have an advantage here. You see how he could take the bishop? But he shouldn't. He should just play bishop d2, defending his pawn. Then he can play c5. He can put his knight on f5. And white's a little bit better. Bishop d2, white's a little bit better. The bishop ain't going anywhere. Bishop's trapped on d4. And that saves my pawn. But Naka took, took. And now Naka thought for like seven hours. This is the longest thing probably knock ahead in the tournament. One variation they were looking at was Bishop D, uh, Lyko and Gustafson. Mm -hmm. Bishop here, takes, takes here. And now Lyko only looked at this, and I was screaming out Rook B1, but they couldn't hear me because I was at home. After this, this is just a draw. But this move, you try to get the queen off of the rook so you can just take it and keep your pawn there. Okay, queen a3, rook b3, and now the engine says you have to take this. And that way you have a rook and a knight for a queen plus this nice passed pawn. And this is probably a draw because that's, that's a monster. Mm -hmm. The engine says white's better, but I don't know, I almost want to have black here because I like that monster passed pawn. Okay, so here he thought forever and ever and ever, and he ended up playing bishop g5, which is not the best move. And then he did this. Now, to me, this is only a position black could win, but it should be a draw. And the engine says rook d3 is a draw. But he blundered with queen f5. And now, I don't, I don't understand uh, Magnus made a very strange move here. And then Naka made a strange move. So the obvious move is to take this. Two connected past pawns, and we defend our d-pawn. And then the engine's like, man, I like black a lot. So I, I, don't, I don't know. If you take this, which is like sort of the obvious move, maybe he missed queen e6. I don't know what he missed. I don't know. And this is just terrible for white. I, mean, I got two pass pawns. And I'm a pawn up. So I don't know what the players missed. I don't know. Because Naka thought forever. And then he took and played queen f5. So he must have analyzed this. But the engine's like, well, black's just much better there. Okay, Magnus played rook e8, which is, you know, okay. Now the game should be an immediate draw. Naka should play queen g4 check and then take this. And then the engine says it's a draw. But he played here, now he's worse again. Because that's that's pretty good. That's, you know, and I got my rooks in the center. Okay. Naka played queen g5, which is not a good move. And then Naka played f4, which is not a good move. And here, um, Magnus made a slight inaccuracy, but I, I literally don't care. He took, which is fine. Yeah. Now here, Magnus played rook e5, and after here, Magnus thought like seven hours in a game 15. Can you believe that? He's a world champion. Okay. Now, everybody on earth would play c5 without thinking and bang the clock. And then black has a big advantage. And Magnus decided to give all of his advantage away and play d3. Doesn't give all of his advantage away, but it's not a good move. Okay, then rook d2 is an excellent move. Rook f3 is good. And now the game is just a draw. Just a draw. Okay, and rook g3 is absurdly bad. Hikaru went into an ending he thought was a dead draw, but he was losing it. So what he should do is check and force the king here. So you, you're going to play like this. And then black can do the same thing. Black can check and check. And you have to go here. And now you're going to win this. You're going to win this. Both rooks are doubled on the seventh. Everybody takes everybody's pawns. 
and the engine says every move is all zeros. This is all zeros, this is all zeros, this is all zeros. Now I'm gonna take this and then it's just a draw. And instead of doing that, Knockup didn't play Rook D8 check, he played here. And now he's drawing, but he's on like the bad side of the draw. Okay. And this is a draw, but black actually has good winning chances and black was winning later. And black's up a pawn. All right. So the game went on and on and on and on and on and on. And then Hikaru made a mistake in this position. Okay, here, is this where he blundered? No, not yet. Okay, so in this position, Hikaru played king h2, which is just a very bad move. And the reason is, if the guy checks you, you'd like to play king f3. You don't want to have your king here where it can't move, especially like in a blitz game. So king h2 is a very poor move. Check. And now you can't, you can't go back here because then I run over to your rook, and if you take this, I just play rook here, here, and I win. The king can't be trapped on the back row unless you're French, right? You can ask MVL. He'll tell you. So he played here. The engine still says this is a draw, but this isn't easy to draw. And now he played king f6, putting him in Wang Chung. Now, first of all, I want to explain to the gawking rabble, there's no stalemate ever. There's never a stalemate. White can always go here. So there's, there's no stalemate. So you can't play for stalemate. And it's very hard for white to draw here. The engine says it's a draw, but even Akaru got a lost position. Okay, he played rook a8. Here comes the king. Rook here. And in this position, whoa. I went to the end of the game somehow. I am a genius. I guess chess is harder than I thought. Okay, and in this position... Uh, okay, this is the critical position. Now, what's funny is when Leiko and Gustafsson were talking about Vancouver, not quite Vancouver, but it's the same ideas. When I went to Moscow with Nakamura and I was his second at the Tall Memorial, he had a game with Jan Nipomnishi. So if you go to the internet now and type in Nipomnishi Nakamura, 2011 Tall Memorial, you'll actually see an example of the Vancura where Hakara was trying to win, but Jan knew the Vancura, so it was a draw. Normally, you want your rook here, behind the pawn. In this position, the rook is not behind the pawn, so now Magnus is winning. Rook f4 is actually a blunder. However, if he didn't play this blunder, he may have lost anyway. <clears throat> Maybe he's losing. I mean, this king can't move, he's down a pawn, etc. Okay. <clears throat> and here Magnus blundered and the game was a draw. The way to win is to play rook e2. These pawns don't matter, this is the pawn that matters. Okay, and now if you take this, I have the move rook e5. And you can't just win my pawn. You can't go here and win my pawn because I have rook e2. Now it's just an easy win. I just move my king here and I win. And if you play rook f4, um, it's, it's, the same, it's the same way to win. Uh, a2 should win. This says g4 draws, but g4... Oh, oh, g4, king g3 draws. Because king takes pawn, rook check wins. Interesting. So rook takes, rook e5. Why am I playing rook e5 instead of king c4? Oh, because he takes this and sacks his rook and draws. Okay. So rook e5, rook f4. The engine says I can't win, but I think I can win. I think it's lying. <laughs> So I can't win your rook, but do I want to? It says I can go here, 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 and you have to stop rook a4. So you have to take. 
I can't tell if this is a draw or a win. It's a win because the engine now says it's a win. Now run my king back. And then the engine says plus 7,000. So, okay. So it is winning for black. And, and what happened was Magnus was just moving around and around and around to gain time on the clock and put pressure on his opponent and try to find a win. So when he played king e6, he was one billion percent sure Naka would go back here, then he would try to win again. And Naka correctly played rook f3. And this is the Vancura idea, not exactly the right position, is you keep your rook attacking the pawn, and if the king moves over, we just check you from the side because your rook can't block. And this is now a draw with rook f3. He just moves his rook back and forth. And problem with playing like rook here and pawn here is after rook here, king back, pawn here, then I go behind the pawn and you, and you got nothing. And you got plenty of it. So now it's a draw after rook f3. So Hikaru, even though Magnus didn't show a way to win, Naka felt wasn't good. And he's like, oh yeah, this is a draw. I remember this draw. So now, if you pretend the rook is behind the pawn where it normally is, black's king can hide at a1 when it comes to help. And then we can try to slowly win. But when the, but when the rook is here, the, the king can't hide anywhere because this rook is here. The king can't, yeah. So if you go to any of these, any of these squares, I just check you from the side. And if you come to these squares, I also can check you from the side. So him putting his rook on f3 ensured the game was a draw. Yeah, he just keeps his rook on the side. And then this was unnecessary to play rook f4 check, but he knew after this that it was a draw because it's two pawns to two and this pawn's hanging. No. And then they agree to a draw. So Magnus was winning at some point in that end game, and if he did win, he would have won the tournament. But he did not win. Now the strangest thing that happened, I have one more game to show you. The strangest thing that happened, which everybody's confused about, is Caruana Nepomnishi in the last round, they played a five-move draw. Now the reason that's weird First of all, it's weird to play a five-move draw. Like, first of all, but it's a separate issue. The reason it's weird is the tiebreak system known going in and knowing that Fabi had the worst tiebreaks by far, the only way to win the tournament is to win. So if he wins, he wins the tournament. If he doesn't win, he doesn't win the tournament. So drawing in five moves is weird. And the reason it's weird, other than the reasons I gave, is Fabi was white. So Fabi with white... If he wins, he wins the tournament, doesn't try to win. That doesn't sound like Fabi. That sounds like, you know, Giri, Rajabov, Anand, Nakamura. It doesn't sound like Fabi. I mean, Naka has plenty of quick draws because I guess he doesn't want to win. Naka didn't lose a game in this tournament, and I believe he was the only one. Although, Karen and I didn't lose any games either. But <laughs> Naka didn't lose any games, and he tied for fifth. Naka just has too many draws. And some of Naka's draws, in fact, two in a row were like one minute. He drew Nepomnishi in one minute, and he drew somebody else in one minute. I forgot I'm who. I say Nepo also didn't lose. Nepo didn't lose any games? S yeah. Mm -hmm. So the chat chat is obsessed, oh, and I'm, I'm also curious. So it seems like you've changed the way. You, did you always say Nepomnishi? I've never, I have heard it pronounced a lot of different ways. I thought His name's pronounced Nepom with the, the P yeah. being Nepom Nishi. Nepom Nishi. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he always says it like that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I've only but the, you have to, the, 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 the accent where you say it loud is Pom. Nepom Nishi. I didn't, I was, I've always just read the word. I, was, mm -hmm. I always didn't. Yeah, but it's just Cyrillic and they're just translating it from the Russian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of Indian people, like, are, again, have this hero worship with Anand. Okay. Forget about your hero worship. Okay. I knew Anand before you were born. Me and Anand are like that, son. Okay. And uh, Anand and Wesley and Naka and Rajabov 
are very bad uh, now for the chess world because they draw their games in one minute. Now, Anand did better the last tournament. He lost all of his games in one minute, so that's good. But you, you, you don't want to be a professional player playing in round robins with the top 10, 20, 30 players in the world, playing a world championship events, and not playing your games. If you don't want to play your games, play in some stupid Goichberg tournament like the World Open or Chicago Open and draw in four moves, that's fine. Nobody knows about those games, and the tournaments have 800 players, so your game doesn't matter. Okay, and you're not getting an appearance fee, you're not getting free hotel, you're not getting your airfare paid, and there's no sponsors. So if you want to play in a local Yokel event and draw in four moves, great. But if you're playing in a world championship and everybody in the world is watching and then you draw in one minute, that's very bad for chess. And then a lot of people do that because, you know, they it's, that's easier. But that's that's silly. Like if I drew in four moves against these guys, that's because they're 400 points better than me. That's the John Fedorowicz excuse. But you can't be Fabiano with white and if you win, you're the world champion and you draw in four moves. That's ridiculous. And they're like, well, maybe he was tired. I don't care if he was tired. I don't care if he's dead. If you win, you're the world champion. You're not tired at that point. What is he, 50 years old? What is he, Dreyev? I've never been so angry. Yeah. When you say Naka didn't do that in this tournament, yes, he did. Naka had like three games that lasted less than five minutes. Okay. Naka didn't lose any games, and he still had 700 draws. Yeah, he's not Geary. He's trying. Yeah. Yeah, frankly ridiculous. Yeah, he drew Nupomnishi in, in without playing, and then he drew somebody else without playing. I forgot who it was. There was another game he played where they just drew immediately, frankly. Yeah, <laughs> just against Nipo. Incorrect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The point is, not that I'm blaming Naka or Nipo, because Naka always does it, and he's not really playing in slow tournaments anymore, so he's just playing for fun. And Jan doing that is weird when he's white, but it's much weirder for Fabi to do it when he needs to win to be the world champion. When, when Jan did it, there was more rounds in the tournament left. When Fabi did it, it made zero sense. There's nothing you could say. And so the only explanation that makes any sense at all is Fabi didn't know if he ties for first, he's out. He didn't know those were the rules. He thought, we'll tie for first, I'll win the tie breaks, which still I don't agree with. Because he has white. If he wins, he wins the tournament. That's I've, I've never been so mad. A little mad. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, maybe he was confused. Now, now also, what's funny is, <clears throat> if, you, if you ever do anything with ratings, I'm not saying they did. <laughs> if you do anything with ratings, like the average ratings of your opponent... Yeah. You can't do that in this tournament because the rapid ratings are absurd. Some of the guys are 1,400, 2,000 because they never play rapid chess. And in slow chess, they're 2,650. So hopefully they didn't do any of that shenanigans. Yeah. So I, I've never been so ashamed. 